I want to talk about the Monkey Beaver 2.0. I'll give you a quick description of the, the harnesses that I had, and then I'll show you this one. I started out with the style, not with the separate leg straps like this one, but the one with the seat. And I sold it to my worker, who was becoming a trainee at the time. But just for example, the one I had had a complete saddle instead of these separate straps. So this one, fast forward a couple years, I bought it because it was easy to put on. Because you didn't have to step into it. It just swings right around your back. So, the thing about this one is, I could never ever feel comfortable in this harness. It always felt like torture. It's compact, it's small, it's easy to transport, but it's super painful and uncomfortable. Never really get used to getting my leg pinched there and having my blood flow cut off. There's no bridge on this, as you can see, it's just these. Whenever I was always doing like a lateral climb and I was moving out into the tree, I would always have trouble with comfort. It was really bad, it would cut into me. The one with the seat wasn't horrible, but it did crush in my hip, so there would be a lot of pressure here in this area. You know, that strap was just another one of these down here. And that one was good for a long time, um, but Anyways, that one wasn't super comfortable for hard climbing out to one side. This one was super uncomfortable. And for a long time, I climbed on this, which is a, I believe this was a Buckingham Ergovation. There's a number there for you, so you can look at it. And this one here, I actually got this one, this was my second saddle. Then I got that red one that was, like I said, very uncomfortable. When you put this saddle on, you have to step inside it. So and then you step out and then you have to shimmy it on. And it's a little tricky and the bridge is holding you together here. Again, pretty simple. Not a lot of moving parts, not a lot of adjustments, easy to get on. And my next trainee that I taught climbing has this harness to this day. I never changed the bridge. I know I'm in big trouble, you guys. Never changed the bridge, just ran it. Um, this one is pretty comfortable, I'm not gonna lie. For the price, pretty good. Um, I think this was like $300 at the time. I bought a size off, and so I ended up where I felt like this harness was actually a little bit too big for my legs. I couldn't get these leg straps to be tighter, and the thing is with these people that make these, they're super duper, oh, we don't know, we're afraid there might be a problem with your harness and you'll sue us. And so they won't really give you parts. Um, I didn't try to actually get parts for this, but I assumed that was gonna be the problem because I had that with other equipment. So again, like the bridge is really nice. You go out to one side, you go out to one side with it, lean out, you know, into the tree and that's pretty good. The trouble with this one was that the bridge was made out of this webbing and it always gets caught, you know, the beaner always gets caught right there on that lip. I don't know if you can see that, but right there. And so I'll be over in the tree and I wanna turn back and then there's like the jerk. So I'm leaning, leaning, leaning and then pop and then all of a sudden it's over and then my whole body balance is moving that way. So not the best for that, but overall pretty good harness. Like I said, a little bit too large for me and I was thinking someday I'll get a better harness. My birthday was coming up this year and my wife thought, you know, I was talking about a harness and everything and I'm hard to shop for. She said, maybe you should get the, the best harness of all time, right? So, I got a good buddy, Mike, and he told me that the Monkey Beaver harness is the best of all time. He had the Monkey Beaver harness already and told me so. So, the thing is, you can see like there's a lot of pieces. There's a lot of parts here. <laughs> have to zoom out to include the whole harness. And somebody told me this when I was at a tree climbing competition. They said, you know, the monkey beaver harness has way too many gadgets on it. I don't like it. And they were, they were riding some kind of Petzl or some inferior harness. This is nice. It's got these ISC clips. I'm actually a huge fan of all the ISC stuff. For some reason, it always feels like it just works right. This red buckle here is an ISC buckle. It works totally perfect. Much like the, let me show you this. Much like this snap lock right here, which works all the time, every time, no struggle. 
Doesn't matter what branches are nearby, what hooks it, nothing. I haven't found anything that could make this malfunction, whereas like these steel, old school, they'll get jammed up pretty good sometimes. It's gotta bash them against the tree. So, in that same line of thought, ISC life support buckles are very cool. They're very reliable, everything is recessed. They don't, I've never had one come unbuckled. Um, the thing is about the monkey beaver harness, you have to step into it. But instead of stepping into leg holes, you're literally just stepping into this. So just this whole area is for your body. You just have to get inside the bridge and you're all set. So you literally can just hold the bridge and step in. At that point, you've got to get your waist belt to waist height. I lean forward and buckle this. And then I can put my arm straps on. Let me show you that from another angle. I literally just take, once I'm up at waist height with it, I buckle it and then I just feel back here and the buckles and this is on. Now, I bought a suspenders because I was doing heavy chainsaws in the tree. It was pulling my harness down cockeyed on my body. And I didn't feel safe, I didn't feel secure and it, you know, is comfort not enough of a reason? So anyway, I bought this, which was Buckingham, and I thought, you know, how bad could it be? It's simple, it's basic. I actually paid more for this than they, than they charged for the comfort version. <laughs> so I thought, you know, this will last longer, it'll be tougher. This thing is agony to wear. It doesn't matter how you adjust this little adjuster dealio, the lengths that you make these. This webbing cuts into your body like a knife. I mean, it feels like somebody's got a 90 degree angle grinder running on your skin when you're climbing with this thing. It does not feel good. It puts pressure, it's abrasive, it's horrible. Check that, get this, monkey beaver harness with suspenders. Comfy suspenders spaced out in the rear. They already have a pre-shaped shoulder area there. And then in the front, it's got this. I'll get more into this, but that, that gets in the way sometimes. But if this is the alternative to all the other problems that you have with suspenders, I'm okay with it. Um, well, actually, I'll just tell you, I have my cast helmet, and I like my cast. It's also sold as the Steel Pro Arborist helmet. And that helmet has a neck strap with a long, you know, tail, basically, because the size of my head, I tighten it, and then it's the right size, and it's like this long. And so sometimes that tail will be down into this area right here and get hooked onto this buckle. But all I do is pull my head back and it pops off. But it, it is an interruption in my workflow, but it's not, it's not horrible. I mean, the alternative of not having the, the um, suspenders, like these suspenders really make a difference on long climbs because I feel like a lot of saddle fatigue comes from the weight of the chainsaw pulling down and pulling the saddle down into my belt or driving it into my hip and causing abrasion at the top of the hip. I noticed that a lot. I always had a really hot feeling there when I would come down, it would ease off and I would feel much better. But that was an area of a pain point that went away completely when I got this harness. So the saddle doesn't ride down, it's got tons of adjustments. Like I said, the guy at the tree climbing competition said, oh, the harness, you know, it's got too many parts, too many moving parts, too many adjustments, too many gadgets. He's right about it having a lot of adjustments, but the entire point of this harness is that you can adjust it, you can, you can do more with it. You know, the bridge, first of all, it's a rope style bridge, which is superior from the get go because you can change the length of your bridge. You can obviously swap this rope out easy peasy, whereas the other one, I'm not going to trouble myself with trying to show you, but it's a headache to try to replace, okay? It's not easy, it's not simple, and it's a pre made product. Uh, I don't even know if you can substitute a rope on that harness due to the construction. This one, you can just get a new piece of rope, you're good to go, piece of climbing rope. Um, it's got these life support dealios. I'm going to put my leg straps on. Again, um, these ISC clips are really great. And then it has a secondary, and this one just keeps the, basically, there's two functions that you want out of this leg strap. One is to keep the leg, like, support up high on your leg. The other one is to support you. So this secondary piece keeps that from trending down. And you can just tighten that and it'll stay. I mean, it might loosen up a little, but you can retighten it. And this will stay up here high on your leg, even if you're spar climbing. So you're spar climbing up the tree and you know, you're flipping your way up there and normally stuff is shifting and moving and 
right now it's not moving because this thing holds it. It does shift a little bit, but not as much as you would think. I always put the life support ones first. So that, and then I put this stretchy one. These parts all seem to be replaceable. Um, well, that one is stitched on, but that's kind of a peripheral component. I'm sure the leg strap is probably re replaceable as an assembly. So um, this ring comes with, I don't use this ring. I'm not really sure how this benefits me because all it does is turn my carabiner 90 degrees. So like my carabiner is left to right now. If it's on the rope, you know, the back is, is towards me here. So the reason I like the back of my carabiner to be towards me is because I use moving rope technique and so I have a secondary carabiner that clips on here that's got my English Prusik on it and it runs up and down the back side. And I found that if it's on the side, like this, on my right side, it doesn't tend to run if I wanna switch hands and I wanna pull with my left and hold and then stroke with my right or switch hands and go vice versa, it doesn't like that very much. So I just keep it, so for my purposes, this is all I do and I just literally ignore this ring. I do not touch it, I do not use it, I shove it out of my way. It's a small amount of weight to carry. The adjustments on these leg straps are more than you need. You can get these tight if you want, but you don't want them tight, you want them loose. So um, I wanted to get into this too. So I learned this from a friend, I hardly ever use it, but these two hooks right here are life support hooks. So my understanding is that these lanyard hooks right here, these lanyard loops, are not exactly considered life support because they are lifting you from an area that's above your legs, it's lifting you from your back. If you clip something here, this is considered a life support device because it holds you up at the proper area of the body. So I have discovered when I'm like, let's say I am out lateral underneath something and my tie-in is across from me, and I wanna strap in, I wanna hook into the branch above me to relieve my discomfort. I can go here instead of the bridge and just take my lanyard and just go here, here, over the branch, and then I can release my tie-in and I'm comfortable. So these are really useful, they're super comfortable to use. They're, you know, they're not better than the bridge necessarily, but they are nice for work positioning because you can, they have a right, left directionality to them, whereas the bridge, obviously it's just gonna go whichever direction the rope wants to go the most. So that's why these things are nice. You can strap in just to the right side, for example, and that'll trend you to that direction. Like I said, the back side of this thing is loaded with adjustments. It's got these two hooks on it. These two, these two loops right here are in the perfect location for storing equipment. So I've always had a clip, actually a carabiner is what I've usually had of this variety on the left side of my harness right there. And so then when I ordered the monkey beaver harness, they had this, which I believe it's camp kilo. And sometimes the clippy comes around the outside and goes out, but you can just push it back in. This is a superior version. This is a good one. There's other ones out there that really are terrible. You don't want to buy them. This one is great. It's got like little bolts that hold it on so it doesn't move and shift. I mean, it just has a tiny bit of movement, but those bolts aren't going to come out. And I can clip tons of hardware to this. It's really awesome. You got to be careful not to accidentally lanyard into this. Um, but I keep my lanyard always hooked on this side and then I remove it on the right side. So I don't have to worry. That's why I put equipment like ropes. Um, my, my climbing rope I usually clip back here, but you've got lots of space for extra carabiners. There's room in the middle over here if you like a medical kit to be with you there. There's adjustments on all components leading up to your, your waist and your legs. So these that go across, um, these are adjustable here and you just tighten that or loosen that. These are all adjust on the fly. This one here is adjust on the fly and it's also got a two to one ratio so you can easily adjust it even if your weight is on it. You just grab that and pull. There's one, there's one here, yep, one there, one there. And then the ones in the middle right here which raises up this, okay? So, so if your leg pads are, are trending downwards on your legs sometimes, right? Let's say it's happening like this and you don't like that. Well, you tighten this up just a touch. And you gotta be careful because when you tighten these, 
It makes a drastic difference on your body when you're, when you're climbing. You can actually feel your harness. When you bend over, you can feel the harness restricting you. When you bend over, these get tight. There's no slack in these. And so since if you need to bend over, you have to pull these like that, and now you have more reach again. But you can do all those adjustments on the fly. And again, I don't run into problems when I'm climbing in this harness. The comfort level is extremely good in this harness. The, the annoying thing, I will say, is trying to package it up at the end of the day, it's a little bit of a bulk item. It's kind of chunky, but it's not that hard to roll up. And let me show you how I do that. I'll show you a removal so you know how it's not that bad, okay? So I just unclip these, so these are already off. I unclip these, I unclip this, and I unclip the chest. And then I just drop it and it's gone, okay? Now, if I want to put it in the bag, I put my spurs in first. You can see it's not a big hole inside this bag. So these do have to go in correctly. But all I do is I pick up the harness by the waist um, restraint clip, uh, belt or the latch. And I just simply fold that in and I roll this inside like that. So now the whole belt is just hanging. The, the, shoulder, the shoulder strap is hanging out the back, the leg straps are hanging down the front, and I literally just hold this in a rolled up position like that. And then I feed the hanging parts down into my bag like this. They will go in, it's very easy. And then I just shove it in and pack it as far as it'll go. When it's time to pull it out of the bag, I usually go for, if I can show you, one of these Gear, gear hooks is a great one to grab, or believe it or not, the shoulder strap is a great part to grab to pull it out of the bag. But that is how you get it in and out of the bag. It's not that bad. Yeah, clearly you can replace the suspenders on this. Oh, it did come with not this piece of junk. Okay, my buddy gave me this. I'm sorry, Mike. This thing sucks. It broke on me in the latch and now it gets in the way all the time. That's garbage. It came with two of these dealies that, let me get close so you can see it. So this is the one that is perma hooked to the chainsaw breakaway lanyard at the end. And then the next one over here is the one that I was using for, you know, it's got a clip on it. So you just the solid loop that the chainsaw is on, you just click it into that. And it's just the same thing. It's a little small piece of webbing, but instead of this solid loop, it's got a clip on it. It's a small clip. So it's a light duty clip. And one day I was climbing the tree and unbeknownst to me, this uh, little strap dealio had just came out, completely pulled out this strap right here and literally undid itself and my chainsaw, my 201 TC fell down to the ground from like, 40 feet up and I wasn't super happy. It didn't break my saw, but this thing did not stay on. Okay. So I ordered myself another camp kilo because this is a reliable equipment holding device. This is a much better quality item. It's constructed very well. It's not like that plastic dingo that I just threw in the garbage. So I'm going to put this on the right side because it's got those little bolts and stuff to hold it on. It's going to be much more reliable to hold stuff than this thing is. And I'll just still use this for the uh, permanent end of the, the breakaway lanyard on the, on the saw. Oh, well there's a carry handle. I suppose there's probably a way to put your, your spurs and your rope and everything inside this. <laughs> I'm guessing they created a method whereby you strap all this together and you make it a tight package and then your rope, everything is inside there and you just throw it on your back. But I haven't figured that way out yet. Courtesy of, you know, Monkey Beaver, it's got this awesome picture on the back too. Believe it or not guys, this is not an infomercial for Monkey Beaver harnesses. Uh, you know, this thing was like 600, 650, I forget, but it felt painful to buy at the time. But it, it turned out to be one of the best things I bought for my tree climbing career because now when I'm in the tree, instead of being in pain, I'm comfortable. And I don't know if there's any price too high to be comfortable. You know, I know single rope guys say it's worth it when they buy, or stationary, 
you know, those guys, they, they think it's worth it. A thousand dollars, two thousand dollars of extra hardware to climb trees and they're always buying new gadgets and maybe it is worth the savings of energy, pain and difficulty. But I can tell you for sure, without a doubt, this is. Cause I'm climbing on a, on a tie in just like that and I'm pulling. So I don't even feel this harness. It just feels good on my feet. And by the way, in case you're wondering, I can't get my pecker out through this thing and go pee. The way you get your thing out, you have to strap into, you know, the tree with your lanyard. So you'll go around the tree like this and stand up a little bit, you know. So I'm strapped into the tree and I'll stand up on my feet and then my, my leg straps here will sag down. And then once my leg straps and stuff sag down, I can unzip this. Uh, you can, believe it or not, you can unzip the, your pants while you're sitting on these, but you've got to loosen up these center adjustments. So you just loosen them up like that. Move this down your leg a touch like that. And at that point now I can go pee because I can just zip, pull them back. See that? You can see the whole zipper right there. So zip it down. You're not peeing on anything. See? There's no harness parts. Just psh, there, go pee. Zip it back up. You're good to go. So this harness is very accommodating to your needs. What else? I'm trying to think. Oh yeah, I was telling you how you can adjust these. Right there. I can easily adjust this. It's a little hard to unadjust. There we go. But yeah, all these, these side adjustments, I wish I could show you this better in this video, but you're just going to have to believe me, okay? But yeah, the comfort level is extremely good, and if this harness is ever pulling on me, it does have back adjustments on the, um, on the, the shoulder straps, and you can get to them, but they're a little hard to get to. So you want to get those pretty much perfect, and if you need to loosen it, you loosen up these front ones and take this off. And it's like it's not even there. You know, obviously, obviously you want to keep this attached, but you can loosen these up a lot if you feel like they're pulling down on your shoulders. And that really, really helps. But I always like it to pull down on my shoulders a little bit because it, you know, the reason it's pulling down on me is because my 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 harness is trying to go down. <laughs> it's trying to go down on my hips. The, the chainsaw is pulling it. You know, I usually feel the right side pulling on me a little bit more. But um, this is, you know, no problem, right? This harness, it just feels so good. And, like, the leg pads on it are plush. It's kind of like sitting on a sofa where... A regular harness is like sitting on a kitchen chair. <laughs> You're fine there, it's okay, it works, you can sit there and eat a meal, but you don't want to be there all night, all day, right? But the sofa, you could be there all day, bro, right there just looking at your iPad, looking at Facebook videos of other people climbing trees. So, you know what I mean? So, when it comes to climbing, that comfort, man, it's comfort. That's the thing. And, uh, I'll show you another thing if I can get to it. So here we go. So here sideways, I'm actually loading in three places when I go sideways on this harness. Okay, not one. I'm loading on my back side on the on the um, the back strap on this harness. I'm loading on the outside of this thigh right here, and I'm loading on the inside of this thigh. Okay, so this is not uncomfortable. This, like, to me, this is fine. There's nothing wrong with this. I've been climbing on this thing for like nine months, and honestly, like, this being up high on my back because the shoulder strap is holding me together makes this very comfortable. And when you run forward into the harness too, like let's say I'm going up a branch, right? I'm pulling it and I'm walking up it. I can't really demonstrate that up here. I gotta get down here. See if you can see this. So, all right, so 
I want my my rope to be in my shoulder here, right? Because I'm I'm out, right? And my my tie-in is behind me, right? I'm I'm kind of lowering myself, right? But I'm at the point where I'm going from lowering myself here to tightening it back as I go up farther, right? So I I just lean in. So I've lifted my my knees, you know, my body off the ground here. And this harness doesn't hurt me. These, these do want to ride up, okay? But where they ride up isn't here in the middle. It's, it's got like room for your sack. So you see how it's got like a left, right? If you tighten this, that pulls the leg strap out. Yeah. This piece right here pulls the leg strap out, which pulls it out of your crack, okay? The front of your crack. So if this is too loose, you will ride up in the front of your crack when you're forward. But let me get let me back you guys up a hair. There we go. So when I'm here, right, and I'm doing this, trying to go up, right? I'm advancing. I'm advancing. And this thing is pulling into me that way. Like Obviously, I want my feet to walk, right? But that's not always reality. Sometimes you're literally just hanging there, you know, just trying to advance yourself. And you don't want this thing riding up into the middle because it's pain. So that's where that, that back piece comes in. And like, I can feel already this one is different. But this thing rode up as far as it could on me there, right? All the way up to here. And I promise you, I promise you, these dealies do not go all the way in and get you. They, I've rarely had a pinch. So, and then it'll go up over your spurs too. So if you wanna lay down on the ground after you've just climbed a big tree or something, you can literally unclip and drop it over past your spurs. It doesn't have that tiny little area where your, your leg has to come out to remove it. So maybe I sound like a little bit of a fanboy with this harness, but you just have to understand like whatever level of pain you've been dealing with all this time, there's an element of where you got used to it or you just, it took so many years and now you don't feel it anymore. But <laughs> I guess someday when you're rich and you just buy like a Cadillac or a BMW, you look back on the days when you had a beater car and you're like, wow, you know, I was building up to this. And that's what happens to you when you buy a monkey beaver harness. I don't know about the 1.0. I can't tell you, and there's probably other editions and versions, but I ordered this in the color I wanted. They advised me on the size, and whatever the guy told me, not only did he understand what climbers' needs were, but he understood the harness to a T, and he got me into the right size harness. That's really important. Like I said before on this video, I had this other harness that was sized wrong because I gained weight during the winter time and I was like, oh, it might stick. I might be stuck at 36 inches, you know, and then I shrank down and I was like a 33 and then the harness was too loose and it wasn't maintaining position on my body because I couldn't get it tight. This harness doesn't have to be tight. Like really, there's nothing tight on this harness. The, the tightness is distributed throughout the body and yes, there are a lot of gadgets and components, but... I climb all year round, okay? I operate this business myself. I do all the climbing. I've got a couple trainees that do some climbing, but they, they've barely, basically done zero climbing, right? Basically, proportionally, they've done less than 1% of our gross amount earned from climbing. So the thing is that in this harness, I've never noticed something getting caught, okay? Like, it is true that like when you, if you ever get in one of those positions where you're on a branch and you're, you're coming down and you ended up like you were facing, you climbed up, but then you got under it to, to make a cut, right? And you're out there and then you're under the branch and now it's time to go back up. And so you move up on your, on your tie in and now you're facing the tree, right? So now you're actually sitting down on a, on a branch. It is true. Stuff will get caught. I'll show you where it gets caught because now I just remembered it right now. Stuff, when you sit down on a branch and it's got a bunch of twigs and like oaks or locusts or anything, they will get caught in this, okay? They will get caught in this dealio right here and this part too, but not as bad. 
usually this one because you're moving that way with your body or you're moving forward and backward when you're when you're sitting on something you're trying to move forward off of it or you're trying to move sideways and twist so this is going to be the one that gets caught there have been times but it was like probably two or three times for the whole year and like i said we're doing high level production stuff we're doing a lot of trees these leg straps don't cause a problem this tail doesn't cause a problem i don't care you don't give a hoot and a holler about this tail right here it's not hurting me it's not hurting anybody yeah all in all guys buy the monkey beaver 2.0 you'll be comfortable in the tree i haven't tried to order replacement parts for it but i know it's got i ordered mine with the leg pads i know since they sell it without the leg pads and i'm not sure if it's like a, a different leg strap i think it is because the, because there's a strap there's a leg strap that doesn't have like velcro for the pads. I've never had the pads come off either by the way, but I could replace the pads. I'm sure I could replace the suspenders. I'm betting you I could replace the leg straps. I don't know what the requirements are with like ANSI. Yeah. I don't know if ANSI allows them to do that, but if they do, then they do. I guarantee you they do it because all these components are obviously replaceable except for a select few which would have to be stitched on. Oh, yeah, for guys that do stationary rope, you got this to bring up your your knee ascender. I've used it before and I never benefited from stationary rope technique, so I don't use this, but it's there and you can use it. Well, I showed you everything you need to know about this. I'm sorry I wasn't in a tree. I actually was gonna go outside and climb a tree for you, but uh, it got dark, you know, it's like 4.30 and it got dark. <laughs> you know, Buckingham Ergovation, it's amazing for $350 at the time, which is probably 500 now. It's amazing what they could pull off. Money-wise, I mean, they made a comfortable harness that works great, but it does not pr provide the same comfort when you're spar climbing down from a large removal and your knees hurt, right? And, well, my knee hurts anyway. Uh, but if you've been up in a tree all day and now you've got something yanking your your harness down cockeyed on your on your hips and your back and you're trying to you're trying to maintain control and center yourself with your lanyard but your your harness is cockeyed really bad because the you know the 661 is hooked up to your hip right I hope the hip, I hooked the 661 up to my hip and the, like I said these suspenders everything stays in place they just I just climb and if I have a little tweak, I just do a little tweak on the way. And that's the thing that you don't get with other harnesses. Anytime you have like a pain point, anything, you can always you can always fix it in the tree with this. That's the that's the gold thing about it. Um, you know, anytime it's like uncomfortable or something's not working, it's not because of the harness. It's because your adjustments. Because once you get the adjustment, like it can go any way. You can move the leg pads this way, that way, up, down. You can move this up, down, you can make it tight, you can make it loose. It's the same with everything. Um, and it doesn't have to be like a tight belt holding your pants up either. Like this belt right here can, can be loose if you like it loose and the harness will still stay in place. That's the thing, like, like say that was super, 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 super loose, right? Well, I've got the straps on. The straps are holding the leg, the leg pads up, or the, sorry, the suspenders are holding the, the leg straps up on my legs so they don't drop down. So this thing, in theory, could be as loose as you want it to be. It's fine. I like it just tight enough to feel, just because that way I know it's there. <laughs> but it basically just pulls it in to where any time like, the, the harness makes a change on my body, I can detect it because it's moving slightly and it's, it's squeezing my belly button. Um, yeah, I, I can't tell you anything else about it. So that's the end of the review, guys. Um, you know, I, I recommend watching, you know, August Hunnicky and uh, and stuff on on YouTube. I've learned some good stuff from those guys, and they got a good attitude at their job site too, which is a great place to, you know, uh, shoot for in terms of the company because you know, angry, frustrated, um, yelling, swearing, it, it it feeds into like a negative. Uh, experience as a tree guide even though the problems are real and your feelings are likely the same as theirs but expressing it in a, in a certain way like with with professionalism and and courtesy and knowledge instead of like just blasting people I mean I, you know I try to be nice on my YouTube videos too I'm sure there's times when like guys 
blow up or whatever. But I'm just saying, if you watch you watch August Haneke on YouTube, you're gonna see how they came to such an excellent harness. You know, those guys clearly did their homework. They did the leg work. They ran the harness. They put it in the tree. They put it to the test. You can see the guys always talking about the prototype on the past videos. And if you're choosing between the 2.0 and the 1.0, I'm not really sure what to tell you because I got the 2.0 and I love it. Is it worth the difference in price? Yes. The only reason I say that is because they're they're solving actual tree climber problems. They're not just making up like, yeah, this looks like softer. Let's throw some some foam at it. You know, let's try that. And then they they mill out another 400,000 units and ship them out to the world, and that's what people get on their shelves, right? It's not like that. This is custom built by Arborist for Arborist. That's why it's awesome. So get it today. All right, and. Um, Check us out on YouTube. All right, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day.